The wonder kid of the Parisian theatre scene, Alexis Michalik dazzled critics with his play Edmond, which revisits the life of the creator of Cyrano de Bergerac, and scooped up some prestigious awards with that word-of-mouth hit. It's another play within a play for this writer, director and actor as he stages the first French adaptation of The Producers. Mel Brooks' 1967 comedy was a blockbuster of stage and screen and it's now on show here in Paris. Ah, si j'étais un producteur, j'aurais des filles plein les bras. Ah, si j'étais un producteur, je dirais toi, 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 pas toi. Alexis, hello. Hello. Now, after great success with classical theatre, with cinema, you've published a book recently. You're now in musicals, and not any musical, The Producers. It's certainly one of the big successes of Broadway. So what pushed you to bring this version in French to the stage here in Paris? Well, I've always dreamed of doing a musical. Uh, I grew up with uh, an English mother, so I've got, I had this double culture, and uh, we, did have any, we didn't have any TV, so it was only when we went to the grandparents in London that we were able to watch TV and watch movies. And so, like every Christmas, we watched Singing in the Rain and West Side Story and all the classics, and I developed this passion for musicals. And uh, eventually, one day, I, 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 I found uh, Mel Brooks' uh, adaptation of, uh, of his Broadway show, uh, which was directed by Susan Strawman, who is the director of the show, uh, the producers with Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick, and I really loved it, and I thought, that's very theatrical as a movie. It must have been a hell of a show, and indeed it was. It was amazingly successful. They ran for five years, and, um, and I always thought this would be a fantastic musical to bring to a French audience. And then I, I met up with uh, Laurent Bentanta and Eric Lousteau, who are the directors of uh, stage uh, entertainment uh, in Paris, uh, which, uh, and they make all the big uh, musicals like um, uh, Lion King, Mamma Mia, and everything. And they asked me, so it was just after Edmund, uh, and they asked me, so what, what, what would be your dream of a musical? And I said, it's the producers. And they said, we've been trying to put it up for 10 years now. So we eventually took the rights to it and, um, and started uh, auditioning. Some of the humour in the producers is quintessentially New York. How did you negotiate that for a French audience? Well, most of the, the humour of Mel Brooks is uh, international, I think. That's why his movies went so well aboard. And especially in France, uh, for older generation, obviously. My, my dad was a big fan of Mel Brooks. But some of it is very uh, Broadway orientated, New Jewish New Yorker. And so we had to find ways to bring it to a French audience, either, uh, audience either to, to, to sw switch the Tonys to the Moliere and, and, uh, and talks, talks about off-Broadway Broadway that we don't have an equivalent here. So we said, oh, it's kind of like Avignon, which is a festival, of course. And I believe you got to discuss that with Mel Brooks about your tweaks to yes, the text. Yes, indeed. Eventually, a few months ago, I was lucky enough to have him on the phone. I was pretty stressed and nervous about that because I, I was sure he, he could be really... Uh, intimidating and in the end well he was very relieved to hear that I spoke English so that that made things easier and once once that was done we started to talk about the producers obviously and his work and and he understood that I really didn't want to betray him I wanted to, to do exactly the set set the scene in the same period as as he did in late 50s in new york and and i really loved his original show and and, and so he understood all of this and then i said i want to do it with an ensemble cast which is not exactly the broadway way of doing it which was uh, using stars for the two main parts and once he got the idea i said i think this would be better for a french audience and he said all right you know your audience cut whatever you want to cut and that was it i had the uh, I had the approval of the, the big chief. Now, much of the comedy in The Producers comes from a source which is definitely not funny, Adolf Hitler and the Second World War. Now, if we look at the historical context, you have the Americans fighting with the Allies against the Nazi regime while France was occupied. Do you think that that means that some of the jokes land differently here? Um, I don't think the, the, the geography really changes it. Uh, I think we all have our cultural ways of seeing humour and what you can say and what you can't say. I think, if anything, f French, a French audience is a little less uh, 
PC than an American audience. They're, you're allowed here to say whatever you want as long as it's funny. Um, but, but also, when he did his original movie, it was in 1967, which is basically 20 years after the war. Uh, so a lot of time has passed since then. Now, uh, obviously, the Second World War is something a bit farther, and we can. And there's been many movies and jokes about it. Um, what is a little bit touchier is the way he describes uh, women and gays and uh, and many things that could be a little bit uh, weird now with the. Uh, all those feminist movements and, and this culture and kind of cancel culture and everything that you can't say anymore. So that was kind of our concern, but we decided, we realized that it was made in such a funny, extravagant way that you can only understand that it's like total irony. And uh, in France, we call it second degree or troisième degree, third degree, fourth degree. And once you get this, then everything, anything goes really. Well, one thing that hasn't changed in show business is the fact that since 1967, it's always been quite a gamble to put on shows. It's not the most financially stable business to be in. True. And with the pandemic, that's been even more complicated. What do you think the major consequences will be on the theatre sector globally? In France, I mean, uh, I don't know about the other countries. There's a big audience. There's a big theatre-loving audience here. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have a big theatre scene, uh, either in the subsidised theatre or private theatre. Um, and also, the, during the pandemic, we were helped, all, all the artists and the theatre and, 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 the, and, the, and the writers and everything, were, was helped by the government. And so, it, it, the, mo the hardest thing was to be unemployed for a year, but uh, we didn't all go bankrupt. Uh, uh, and we can see that now the audience is really wanting to come back to the theatre, so that's a good thing. So I think I kind of see it as a kind of huge hi hiatus, like a pause. And now, hopefully, we're heading into a, another era of, uh, of shows and, and laughters and whatever there is. Now, your previous theatrical production, Edmond, the play that you wrote, was a critical hit, a word of mouth a phenomenon. It's still on stage after five years, was adapted for cinema. You don't work with big stars, uh, standout names. So what do you put the success of that play down to? Um, well, certainly the fact that there's no stars allow it to play many seasons, uh, because obviously if you, have a, if you have a crew, if you have a team of unknown amazing actors, then if ever they decide to stop, you can find another unknown amazing actor who will step in and, and, and keep doing the good work. Um, but I guess that it's not only that, it's... Uh, I like telling stories that I want to see in theatres. Uh, I like to... And I tell stories in theatre uh, that I could also see in a TV show or in a movie. Uh, I think there's this thing of uh, we're, we're in a, an audience that's accustomed to, um, to so many ways of seeing, uh, of getting stories uh, uh, that you can't do theatre today as if, as if or Netflix didn't exist. So you have to take this in consideration and try, and I try to make my shows the less boring, less dull I can and keep it always with pace and rhythm, fantastic actors and an ensemble cast always. And, uh, and I think that's what works here. Now, speaking of musicals, uh, a giant of American musicals, Stephen Sondheim has just passed away, uh, prompting an outpouring of admiration and tributes in the States. It's hard to imagine a, a similar scenario here in France. Why do you think musicals don't have the same cultural weight? Um, well, they used to at one point, I think. Uh, France has always been a country that loves uh, operetta and, uh, and vaudeville. Uh, but there's been a point in where we've kind of drifted towards theatre and less and less towards musicals. Um, I think Broadway and New York and, and London have also this culture of huge theatres, like 2,000-seat theatres, and also there's no language barrier. 
like when people go there, they can tourists from all around the world can come and see Broadway shows, and and it's not exactly the case here. No one from Germany or China would come and see the producers in French. It would be kind of weird. So it's easier to produce a play which is economically, like, decent with a few actors, or but but not like twenty musicians, than a than a than a musical. So obviously it's rarer because the market is smaller. Finally. In the producers, you have a laugh at the expense of show business people and all their superstitions and rituals. You can't say good luck, you have to say break a leg. I do. Do you have rituals and superstitions before your performances? Yeah, obviously here we don't say break a leg, we say merde, which basically translates to shit. And, uh, and we have a lot of superstitions. There, there are words that we can't say in a theatre. Uh, uh, there, are, there are rituals. Uh, we have a... It, it looks, it, it's kind of like an atheist religion uh, when you look at it. Um, there's always this moment where we enter the theatre, that's like the first day that we're in the theatre, that's kind of magical. And there's also the day of the, of the premiere, the opening night in France. And I'm not sure they do this everywhere, but in France it's a day where you give each other presents. So it's like a mini Christmas and the bigger the troupe, the, the bigger the presents. And so here, because there are 16 actors on stage and seven musicians and a lot of tech, well, we, we, it, it, was, it really felt like Christmas. So I love these, these traditions. Very generous, it sounds like. It is. Alexis Michalik, thank you very much. Thank you.